That is right, my friend. Arousal does indeed improve your performance. That's why some days at the gym you're like, I'm hitting my PBs, I'm doing what I need to do, I'm a beast. And the other days you're like, why can't I even lift my baseline weights? Well, this is why. It's because of arousal. So arousal is a heightened state, either psychologically or physiologically, and essentially preps your body to run, to lift more, to be in a heightened state of alertness. And so the more aroused you are to a limit, which we'll get into later, the better your performance is. So let's get into why arousal firstly improves your performance and also how to optimize it so you can be the best version of you at the gym. Let's start off with the science behind arousal and performance. So just like there's a mind-body connection, I'm a strong believer of knowledge-body connection. So I think it's super important to understand why you're doing and what you're doing rather than just believing some TikTok trend. And in this way, your, your mind understands better what you're doing and you actually know the purpose of it. And as a result, you can get better outcomes if you actually understand what you're doing, which is why I always start with the science or a bit of a background before I get to the juicy details. So in terms of the science, there's a psychological principle called the York Stoughton Law, which is essentially an inverted U. And it states that uh, there's a peak, there's a peak or optimum, optimum level of performance. And after that, it just goes down. So you start off with um, no arousal, start off with, then you have your peak arousal, and it just becomes kind of productive. So a way to look at it is also like coffee. So coffee, for example, right? When you first start off, when you don't have any coffee, you're kind of like, eh, whatever, really tired. And then you hit your peak or optimum state once you're really caffeinated and then there's a slump. So likewise, there's when you start off unaroused, you're not really performing well, you hit your optimum state. But then if you go too far, you can then cause anxiety or restlessness and then just goes downhill. So this is really important for certain sports like, for example, powerlifting when you really need to focus. You don't want to get too aroused to the point that you can't concentrate and you can't focus. Let's start off with the effects of arousal. So firstly, let's look at the physiological effects. So the first one is increased heart rate and blood flow. When your body goes through periods of intense arousal or rather optimum level of arousal, your body pumps more blood around and you have increased heart rate. This as a result moves more oxygen and nutrients to your muscles. And this then improves endurance and power output. For example, like HIIT, this is when your body needs to utilize oxygen as efficiently as it can in order to burn calories after. If you haven't checked out my video on HIIT workouts versus running before, I highly suggest you do because I go into the epoch effect and the best way to burn calories and the best way to utilize fat. The next one is enhanced muscle activation and strength. So before some types of matches, you might see, for example, powerlifters really psyching themselves up before, even swearing at themselves. This is because it activates a CNS, a central nervous system. So when the central nervous system gets activated, it increases muscle recruitment and as a result, more power output. Research published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning supports this. It basically says that techniques that elicit this response from the CNS help improve strength and performance by optimizing motor functions. So when motor functions are optimized, so when more um, muscle fibers are recruited, the body is stronger and more able to produce force and as a result, perform better. Moving on to the psychological effects of arousal. So the first one is improved focus and motivation. When you're in the right zone of arousal, your body releases adrenaline and dopamine, which improve focus and motivation. And in terms of pre-exercise arousal, such as listening to certain types of music, um, something that's really loud, upbeat, really gets you um, ready to lift, I guess. Um, these types of music can reduce cortisol levels, so your stress levels, and increase testosterone. It's really important to note that for you ladies out there, increasing testosterone levels does not make you a man. So everyone, both male and female genders, have um, a level of testosterone in them, and this can actually help improve performance and strength. And so that tiny bit increase for women does not make you a man, and for men, it makes you stronger. So it's a win-win for both genders. Therefore, high levels of adrenaline, dopamine, and testosterone, and low levels of cortisol help improve mood and performance and motivation. Now onto the part that everyone's been waiting for, how to optimize arousal for enhanced performance. The first one is mood boosting supplements. So a big fat disclaimer here, this is general information, not personalized advice. Always consult a doctor, nutritionist, specialized healthcare provider before making any of these changes. Incorporating mood boosting supplements can help 
um, with performance. So for example, L-theanine commonly found in green tea can help boost mood and um, energy. So green tea has caffeine, but to a smaller amount than uh, coffee does. And so with the caffeine in green tea plus L-theanine, this can really help provide energy, um, reduce fatigue without the jitteriness that coffee brings. Research shows that adaptogens like ashwagandha, for example, can help reduce fatigue, improve mental clarity and improve overall performance and the experience of arousal, which is ideal for um, workouts or for any types of competitions. This next one is one of my favorites. It's called action breathing. It's a combination of short forceful exhales with long controlled inhales. So it can be used for exercise like deadlifts, for example. So when you're going down with the bar or dumbbells, you slowly inhale and you exhale forcefully as you come back up. So this um, keeps your body in rhythm with the exercise and with your breathing, but it also helps it forcefully exert all your power at the critical points in the exercise. This works because it stimulates your nervous system, which activates your muscle fibers. And it's also a great plus because it's a good emotional release. It's, close, it's good for um, clearing the mind and enhancing concentration and plus breathing for decades or centuries at this point has always been seen as a positive in terms of mental clarity and obviously when you have better emotional regulation your performance is also improved the next one is visualization so before you roll your eyes at me just hear me out all right so before you work out either close your eyes or if you can't stare at a um, plain wall or something like that and just imagine the state you would be in once you achieve your goal. So if you want to lift extra five kilos, just take a moment, pause, breathe, and just imagine how you would feel once you've lifted that. So do you feel happy? Do you feel um, like a sense of accomplishment? Do you feel excited, like on top of the world, whatever it may be? So once you, once you have that feeling, open your eyes, channel it, and then try performing the exercise. And nine out of 10 times, this actually works because your brain's already like, I've achieved this emotionally. So obviously I can do it in real life. And when I say this, I don't mean, you know, if you're lifting 50 kilos, lift 100, that's not what I'm saying. Within limitations, within what you genuinely, truly in your brain think you can achieve, go for that. And it really does work. Moving on, tactile simulation. So this one refers to the physical feeling of objects or things um, on your skin. So this can include holding grips or wearing compression clothing. And the way this works is your body essentially, essentially goes, hmm. This isn't, this is a foreign object, a foreign feeling. And so it creates a heightened state of alertness, which, which essentially increases arousal. This works because the physical triggers help with activating the brain's sensory uh, motor cortex, which helps the body prepare to perform. Lastly, number five or six, I'm not sure, but the last one is cold exposure or cryo exposure. So before you work out, um, jump in a quick cold shower or a cold or an ice bath, something like that. And by doing this, it essentially wakes your body up. It um, forces it into a state of alertness, which increases arousal. The cold stimulates a nervous system, which triggers the release of adrenaline, which then prepares your body for action. Another reason it works is that cold exposure can boost um, norepinephrine, which is a hormone that increases focus, arousal, and mental clarity. And obviously when you have a better idea, when you feel mentally and emotionally more calm, you perform better. So it's a win-win on both fronts. So there you have it, my top tips backed by science on how you can improve your arousal levels to improve your performance in a workout and ultimately achieve your goals quicker. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or queries, I'm more than happy to go through them. And as always, like, share and subscribe to see more content like this.